This is Amateur Logic, episode 106, for July 15th, 2017. This episode of Amateur Logic was brought to you by MFJ, the world leaders in ham radio accessories at mfjenterprises.com, and by ICOM. Heard it, worked it, logged it. Start off strong in contesting with ICOM. Hi, welcome to Amateur Logic. I'm George. I'm Tommy. I'm Peter. And I'm Emil. And boy, it's it's been a hot summer here so far. And it's good to be back. It is good to be back. And this is going to be our, our field day coverage in this episode. It was a little different this year, wasn't it, Yeah, it was Tommy? very different. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to hit the woods this year because of the weather. Yep. Um, it's a little disappointing, and uh, it's always a lot of hard work, and it's hot and bugs, and but it's so much fun, and, and I really kind of missed it a lot more than I thought I would. Yeah, me too. You know, it's just like deja vu, like I, I've seems heard like you we say were that just, before. Seems like we were just talking about that just a few <laughs> moments ago. <laughs> it surely does. Well, we did do field day, though. We did it right here in the shack. We ran off emergency generators. It, it was really more comfortable, but... Uh, and it was fun. We made more contacts than we had made. Yeah, it, it was fun. It years. just wasn't quite the same. There yeah. wasn't an adventure, but right. we had a good time, nevertheless. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, email, what about you? Did y'all do field day down there? We did. In uh, the W5 SLA clubhouse, we had our uh, 2017 field day, and I was the field station out in the uh, field next to the clubhouse uh, doing some mobile operations, all emergency power, um, with my shack in a box and some <laughs> MFJ antennas. And it uh, worked out well. We had a good time. But it was hot, and it did rain. So, Yeah, it rained up here, too. Yeah, most of the rain had happened a few days, you know, leading up mm -hmm. to field day. And it was, well, you'll get to see kind of what one of the problems yeah. was. As a matter of fact... Um, well, we'll look at that in just a minute. Peter, what have you been up to? Well, I've been, um, uh, whilst it's not been field day here, I've come probably a little bit close to that. Uh, I uh, finished modding my bit X40, which you'll see later, and I made my first contact with that, and it turned out to be a portable station activating a park in South Australia. Hello and welcome. When we last left my bit X40, I had added digital tuning, which works great but I still don't have a proper microphone and the transmit and receive audio could be improved. Today, I'm going to add a proper microphone and I found some mods to improve the audio. So let's get started. Here's the microphone I'm going to use. It's a cheap Chinese made HM36 ICOM compatible microphone. It has an eight pin plug on the end. So I've ordered an eight pin socket going to drill a hole here in the side, mount the socket like so, and then run some wires to the back of the socket. Now I must say I do find soldering these 8-pin DIN plugs very, very hard. I'd almost prefer to be doing um, surface mount. Now, as you can see, I've uh, used a number of uh, breadboard connectors, these little connectors like you can see in front of you, and I've cut them short and then soldered them onto the 8-pin connector. And I found that worked a lot better for me. My first mod is from the BidX Mods page. The receive audio is a bit overdriven, and if I remove C113, this little capacitor here, which is located above this chip here, and to the right of this blue potentiometer here, that should reduce the receive audio a little bit and make it sound a bit more pleasant. 
The final uh, modification which I'm going to do is a modification to improve the transmit audio and make it a little bit punchier. This was suggested by Peter Parker, VK3YE. He suggests removing this capacitor, which is located uh, right next to the microphone connector. This is C102, and replacing it with a 27 picofarad capacitor. Now, I haven't got a 27 picofarad capacitor, but I've wired a 4.7 and a 22 in parallel. And of course, when you wire capacitors in parallel, they add to each other. So that makes a total of 26.7 picofarads. Now, I had a look at the circuit diagram, and I noted that that capacitor is actually wired in parallel with this unpopulated uh, trimmer capacitor here. So what you could do is you could actually remove this capacitor, then put in, say, a 30 picofarad trimmer capacitor here, and then just trim it until you get the audio uh, to a level that you're comfortable with. I've just finished resoldering the surface mount capacitor back into its original place. Unfortunately, the modification didn't work for me. It pulled the signal about a half a kilohertz off frequency and reduced the output power. Now, why is that? Well, it could be a number of reasons, but it's possible that uh, my microphone has its own capacitance, which is different from uh, that that Peter uh, Parker, VK3YE, has got. And so I get a different result. But for me, going back to the original capacitance seems to work better. So that's what I've done. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try the modification. It may well work better, with, better for you with your microphone. VK5 Papa Alpha Sierra Portable. This is Victor Kilo 3 Papa Bravo QSL. VK3 PAS uh, Portable, VK3 Papa Bravo. Uh, yes, QSL on the call sign. Uh, handle this way is Peter, Papa Echo Tango Echo Romeo. QDH is Baronia in far eastern Melbourne. Uh, very good uh, afternoon to you, and uh, uh, I'm uh, using a BIDX40. You're my very first contact on uh, this home-built uh, BIDX40 transceiver. And uh, you're m making a nice trip into Melbourne today, 5 and 9, but with some QSB there. So put it back to you, VK3 uh, PAS Portable, VK3 PB. VK5 PAS Portable, VK3 PB. Just before you go, Paul, can you just give me a quick uh, commentary on my audio quality? Uh, because I'm just uh, uh, concerned to see uh, what kind of audio quality this microphone is giving. Put it back to you. VK5 PAS, VK3 PB. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, VK5 PAS Portable, VK3 PB. No worries, Paul. Thanks for the report. And uh, you have a nice day out in the park today. VK3 PB clear. Cheers. That was pretty cool, yeah. Peter. But I, I got to say, I, to this day, I did not know Spider-Man was a ham. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, it, uh, it occurred to me when I was making that segment that uh, Peter Parker, VK3YE, who's actually got his own website, do go out and check it out. He's also released a couple of books as well. Um, he's, uh, he's got the same name as Spider-Man, so that, that's quite laughable. Uh, but it was great to make that. Oh, sorry, Tommy? Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I hope he's capitalizing on that because he's got a great <laughs> opportunity there. <laughs> yeah, he can, I'm sure he can make, make a few dollars out of it. But look, I, it was great to make the contact with that, um, I think it was Paul in um, South Australia. Mm -hmm. That's a distance of about or 700, 800 miles. And, um, you know, there was a bit of QSB there and uh, the signal wasn't uh, the strongest. But he was uh, operating low power, portable, and um, he gave me a very good audio report. So uh, I, I was very, very happy with the final result. Yeah, that, that looks like a really fun project. Yeah, yeah. Building absolutely. Building the whole radio, and, the whole bit. It just looks like a great time. And the best thing is, um, if you look inside the actual case, at, at the actual board, um, all the connectors are set up in such a way as that you could just pull a connector out and then try something different. You know, you could take out the VFO and put another VFO in very easily. So it's very, very hackable. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Tell me, what if you could have one watt meter that that covered all your bands and everything you needed? Wouldn't that be nice? That would be pretty awesome. Where would you find something like well, that? It's the MFJ 849, and it's a digital watt meter, a big 3.5 inch bright orange display. You can easily see that up close or from a distance, either one. Here's some neat things about it the display, it's large. You can see forward power, you can see reflected power, and you can see SWR all displayed at once. Unlike, uh, you know, the other meters that have the crosshairs on it mm -hmm. and you know the forward and reflect it and then you gotta follow the little curve to get your yeah. SWR it's calculated out and displayed there and this this thing is highly accurate too but better than that well or just as good as that because that's pretty good mm -hmm. it's got a switch here where you can select to use it with your HF gear or switch it the other way and it's good for VHF and UHF Gives a nice display there. Forward power, reflected SWR. It's got an input and an output here to be used with the VHF and UHF bands. It's got another set to be used with uh, HF bands over here. And you can see these are those air dielectric type of uh, SO239s. Mm -hmm. So they're low loss. They go good into the higher frequencies. Uh, if you flip her back around there. Uh, this thing is good from 1.5 to 525 megahertz. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it, it covers pretty, you know, pretty all much the, every band I use. Yeah, all the, all the popular bands. It will handle up to 200 watts. And one thing that's impressive here, there's no range switch on it because it's auto-ranging. Yeah, that's nice. And when I saw that it had HF and VHF, I was thinking maybe you had to disconnect you know, yeah. look at the other antenna, but that's really nice that you've got inputs for both. Yeah, just flip the switch there. Nice looking display there, and, and I've got it keyed. I'm going to let go of the rig. And you see it holds the display for a second, so if you don't mm -hmm. see it immediately, you know, you've got a moment to look over there. But this is your watt meter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to using this because uh, I had one built into my old manual tuner that I used. When I got the latest automatic one, I kind of lost that. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to putting this in line and taking a look at it. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, Tommy. Well, thanks for showing us your watt meter there. Yeah. It's just right here in the palm of my hand. Yep. Is that where you keep it? <clears throat> Most of the time. 
you're invited to MFJ's 45th anniversary ARRL Day in the Park. Come and celebrate with them September the 29th and 30th uh, this year in Starkville, Mississippi. They do this every five years, and I've been to a couple of them in the past. This is uh, where I was when we shot those special MFJ videos in Ameritron, High Gain, all those a few yeah, years those, back. Yeah, those were great videos. I, I hate I missed them. I'm going to go this yeah. time and see it myself. What are uh, Tell us some of the, the high points there, Tommy. Well, they've got some great prizes they're going to be giving away. They got, you know, MFJ has several companies, so they're going to be giving away prizes from MFJ, Ameritron, Cushcraft, High Gain, Mirage, and Vectronics. They'll be drawing September the 30th at 2 p.m. and you must be present to win. Okay, and that is going to be Saturday, September the 30th. And at 2 p.m., that's going to mean, uh, well, that there's a, a big day in the park. So they'll be at the park when they do that. And it'll be right after the, the free lunch, Mississippi Southern Chicken with all the fixings. It'll be in McKee Park in Starville, Mississippi. Uh, free factory tours, huh? Yeah, going to be uh, tours of MFJ. Again, MFJ, Ameritron, Cushcraft, High Gain, Mirage, Vectronics, the MFJ Metal Shop also. For them. Yep. And uh, that'll be going on uh, Friday 29th from 8 a.m. to 4.30 and Saturday the 30th from 7 a.m. until noon. Yeah, and at 7 a.m. on Saturday, uh, they're, they're going to begin and it'll go until 2 p.m., free tailgating so if you've got some old gear boat anchors antennas whatever you want to sell off uh bring them on yeah that should that should actually be a lot of fun yeah they also got uh free forums we don't know what those will be yet uh that that has not been determined yet so we'll have to get more info on that as it's coming up mm -hmm. and you can also use your ve credentials there tommy yeah, they, uh, they're going to be giving uh, exams there. The Lowndes County Amateur Radio Club, which I think that's Arnie's group there that's in the chat room. Anyway, bring uh, your photo ID and $15 cash on September the 30th at 9 a.m. if you want to take your exam. Yeah, so join us there. Uh, Tommy and I are both going to be there. Definitely. And it's, it's going to be a great time. Like I say, I've been to it twice before. I promised Tommy chicken, but it didn't make it all the Never way back made home. It back. Yep. I'm gonna have to go get my own. Yep, you will. Yep. So, but I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a big time. Yeah, it is. It, it's well worth it. If you can get there, you you don't want to miss it. I mean, the factory tours alone are just yeah, you yeah, know, amazing. Definitely. That's what I want to go do. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you coming to me? Ever, yeah, ever since seeing your guys' video of that, I, I was fascinated. So yeah. Yeah, it's 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 worth it just for that. Oh yeah, no doubt. So if you're if you're anywhere where you can get by, yeah, I yep. don't think you're gonna regret it. Plus the meal they got chicken, and it's free. Oh, I'm there. That's the best <laughs> kind of chicken. <laughs> it is. No, it really is good. We want to thank uh, uh, Martin Jew, K5FLU, the owner of MFJ, and everyone who works there for putting this on every few years yeah it's always a, a great party well you know tommy the hat has been back out on the road again um our friend john baggett yeah is it what's his call sign is it K2 i know B -A -G. k2 i couldn't remember yeah, if it was a k or not k2 bag his hat is is better traveled than us yeah, I know. I travel every week, and I'm pretty sure that hat's got more miles than I do. And look where that hat has been. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to one of these next week myself. Oh, the fries? Actually, fries I am electronics. also. You want fries with that? Y yes, I do. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah. This is at the uh, Bay Area. Uh, I haven't been to that particular one. You know, they've got several out there mm -hmm. in the uh, in San Francisco area, but the hat made it to a fries. You know, that's that's got to be one of the top tourist destinations out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every city that's got a fries is a tourist destination. <laughs> you know, it really is. If you're a geek, man, you need to see that place. That and Micro Center. But the hat didn't stop there. It kept going. The next stop, look right there. Oh, wow. Back to North Carolina? Oh, yep. 
Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Gets around. Oh, oh. man. It gets around, that's for sure. I wonder yeah. if he has to buy a separate ticket for that hat. That's, <laughs> you know, it's probably got frequent flyer miles by now. It should. Yeah. And yeah. here it is again. Ready to go. Yep. Guess where it was this time? I, I bet you John gets upgrades like with Dallas. that hat. Oh, yeah, you know it rides first class. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, LAX. Okay. But, you know, the hat is bi-coastal. It doesn't just hang out on one side of the U.S. There you go. No. Miami. Man. And it defies gravity. It does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, back out to the West Coast again. Uh, there it is at the Seattle-Tacoma International see, Airport. Yep. Jeez. Ray's old neighborhood. Yep. And then the hat decided to head back toward home. So... That's not home right there, I don't think. <laughs> it must have had to go back through L.A. to get there. I think so. That's either L.A. or that's JFK. You know, that's pretty much, I could say it's either one, nobody knows the difference. <laughs> <laughs> the hat would know. The hat would know, yep. And here's the hat back at home on uh, Coney Island Beach and Boardwalk. Awesome. Now we're talking. Enjoying a a bacon burger there. That I think is that's the, a burger. That is the best hat picture yet. I think so. Plus, it's making me hungry. Mm -hmm. What? I think it was the 4th of July? I think it was. So, you know, it's a very patriotic hat. Salute. And, uh, and I have to say, John represents very well with mm -hmm. the hat. I see a message, in, a question in the chat room from Chris. KD8... Uh, YVJ says, where can he get a hat? Where well, can he get a hat? You remember Chris, our friend from Chris. Uh, Cincinnati. Well, Chris, you can get a hat, well, right here at the Amateur Logic Spreadshirt Show. At, at the, the Amateur, Amateur Logic, Logic Spreadshirt Store? Yeah, that's okay. what I was talking about. <laughs> where is that, Tommy? That's at AmateurLogic.Spreadshirt.com. And you can get uh, not only hats there, but you can get all kinds of fine apparel like that. You can. That. You can get ham college sweatshirts. You can get uh, golf shirts, t-shirts. Um, there's quite a few things on there. Yep. In so, various colors and sizes. Yeah. So the colors go to the amateurlogic.spreadshirt.com uh, site and uh, get your own hat. Yeah. yeah. And if, uh, if you wear it around representing, send your pictures in like John's been doing. And, yeah. Uh, Exactly. Probably make it on the show. Yeah. It could be some exotic location, like, oh, I don't know, Slidell. Go ahead. Exotic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, uh, speaking of Slidell, there's something coming up down there mm, pretty soon here in an email. Um, thinking it's tomorrow. There's the yeah. uh, Ozone Amateur Radio Club's uh, Ham Fest for 2017. It is tomorrow. I think those doors might open at 8 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock, and uh, they'll be, MFJ will be there, and uh, some other vendors, no doubt. Lots of food, people, and friends. Yep. I really wanted to go down there this year, but I'm just... Yeah, it just don't work out yeah. with me. I had some things come up, family things come up, and some plans kind of change, but uh, maybe I'll make it next year. I really yeah. was hoping to make it. Well, I'll, I'll be... Um I'll be headed to Houston, so email by the time I get down to around Interstate 12, I'm going to be turning right, so we're going to miss you. you are, wait, you going right? Yeah. That's the wrong way. <laughs> no, no, that's not, not, not from where I am. All right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to hearing about it afterwards. No doubt. You going to bring us a report? Absolutely. Okay. All right, looking forward to that. Are you going to see our friend uh, John Britton there? I have a feeling he's going to be in a bunch of the camera frames. Something tells <laughs> me, based on past experience, yep. Could happen then. Yeah, could happen. Cool. Okay, cool. Well, uh, let's get on into... I'll tell you what, as long as we're here, you've got an email you wanted to report on, don't you, email? An email? Yes. Um, well, or a George, post? Yeah, what you something? guys what you guys been working on down there? Um oh uh so 
you guys do ham college. Yes. Um, there's a uh, local technical school, North Shore uh, Technical School here in Lacombe, Louisiana. Real only about college. 20 minutes away. Now, Macomb's in Mississippi. Not Macomb. Lacombe with an L. Lacombe. Alpha. Oh. Lacombe. Oh. That one. Yes. The other comb. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's a technical college up there. And uh, me and about four or five other hams got together and put together a class um, teaching basic electronics and wireless communications. And uh, I was really surprised at the uh, outcome of that. And the, the college, we just finished it. It was about three months long. And the college actually sent us some really high-rated kudos from the class members. So I'm hoping to continue that and uh, give back to the community here. So that was fun. Boy, yeah, that's what it's all about, man. Man, South Louisiana kudos. That's about as good as yeah. it gets. Yeah. It's almost as good as chicken and sweet tea. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> Well, thanks for doing that, Emil. You think you made any hams? I'm thinking we we did. Um, they actually had a, a one of the classes. They actually built a uh, AM radio receiver kit, um, soldering and all. So, we'll. Uh, I'm yet to put mine together, but I think I'll make that a segment. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's a great thing you guys are doing down there. It really is. We need to do something like that around here. Mm-hmm. I, mine. Mine. Does. <laughs> Mine doesn't sound as good as Professor, uh, uh, what do y'all say, Dean Martin and Professor? Professor, <laughs> Professor Thomas, Thomas and Dean Martin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to come up with a, a cool, jazzy name. Oh, we'll come up with one for you. Yeah, we're going to work on that. <laughs> Uh-oh. No, I don't know. As long as it's not Mike, I'm okay. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, I think that one's taken. No. No, I mean, as long as Mike doesn't do it. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Well, he'll, uh, he'll come up with pictures and everything for you. Yep. That's right. We had the um, W5SLA field day, and uh, you can see there, that's the antennas, the beam, tri-bander, and wire. That feeds the actual emergency uh, operations center, or ECC, as they call it. Well, that looks just it's, like one we had for field day. Mm -hmm. I think ours was a little different than that. Cool. <laughs> yeah. There's my, uh, I was the station in the field, and I have my um, B squared engineering dual band VHF UHF J pole on top of the MFJ 1919 EX, I think it is, that push up pole, which yeah. is really super convenient. Yeah, those are nice. And then the background, in the back of it, is MFJ's um, G5RV on a homemade mast that sits on the back of my truck. Uh, with that ladder line coming down, you can see there. And uh, I took cues from Peter once again. Peter, this is uh, at the bottom of that ladder line. My coax is wrapped around an ugly balin. Oh, good. <laughs> to knock out some of the issues there. And on the next one, Tommy, that's actually the uh, station under the, tar uh, under the pop up over there before it was raining. Um, and the truck there, which has that antenna sitting in the back of it. It's really out of frame. And on the next picture there, you can see one of our mobile ham operators and uh, vice president of our club. Uh, he had a little icon with uh, AH4 and a wire hooked to it, all on battery. Cool. He uses the same kind of radio mount I use for my SWR meter. Oh, the radio mount? The palm mount? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That, that's a A5UY, John. Uh, he's he's one of the uh, club board members. Cool. Um, and next picture is our D-Star Education Station, which with somebody you guys know, KG5CEN. He was our uh, the guy during the D-Star uh, segment we did a couple mm -hmm. of episodes back. He was helping people understand what that's all about. And mm -hmm. after that one. We have the club's actual station where we were racking up contacts. Now, one of the things that's, of course, is kind of hard to see here, in the middle of that console on the second level is a little Raspberry Pi next to the blue, there's a blue cable or something. It's right in the middle. Yeah, you got it right there. That Raspberry Pi was our actual centralized log system. One of our members is a uh, python or a developer in general and he wrote on the fly he took the rules of the awrl's um uh, field day book and he wrote 
the Python program so we can all log to that Pi from all the we operated three Foxtrot with three stations. So we were all web browsing to that Pi logging our contacts. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yep. Uh, on the fly, too. You got to hand it to him. Um, and I think the next picture is us right when we were starting to set up in the main room here um, in the morning. You can see, in fact, the pie. We, we were setting up the pie on that television that's hanging in the corner. And last one says it all. That is the uh, W5 SLA ECC, which has been there serving Slidell since 1964. This club has a lot of history and a lot of good people in it. So uh, we had a ball. Oh, that's great. And explain to us what ozone means. The ozone amateur radio club, from what I understand, um, before it was ozone amateur radio, it was the ozone belt amateur radio club. They thought that the ozone in the atmosphere in this area north of the lake, Pontchartrain, um, was actually beneficial to um, health and so that name kind of stuck with the uh, people who were around this area, and they actually called it the Ozone Amateur Radio Club and formed it after that Ozone Belt Club. So that's where it comes from. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's yeah, there's a, a lot name. of history there. Uh, W5SLA.net is the website, and it's all there. We had a good time, too. It started a, a week before Field Day got here. You know, we always do it out in the woods, and uh, Wayne and Vince and I went out. We cleared off a nice big area this year in the woods. There had been a forest fire through there last year, so a lot of the undergrowth had burned out. We were able to reclaim a little more area than we'd had it to pass. As a matter of fact, probably three times as much. Well, we, we can uh, narrate this as we go along because okay. there is no narration to it. That's Wayne and I. We, were, uh, we cleared a number of trees. You can we're, see the charm. You know, we're both, the we just pulled them up by the roots, man. Y'all are a lot stronger than you look. I know it, yeah. Watch this. We almost got Vince. <laughs> we, we cut a lot of smaller trees out of that area there. Yeah, you, you can see char just all over the place on the bottom part of the road. Yeah. yeah. But where he's standing right there, and to the left, all that, you know, was, was briars and, you know, there's all kinds of undergrowth. And all that got burned out. Yeah, I remember, I remember that right there. You couldn't hardly walk over that part where you are. Yep. And this is afterwards. Look at all that space, man. We yeah. could have pulled them. Mobile home or something. We up could in there. have parked three vehicles in there and put the tent up as well. There was so much area there. A lot more room in the past. All this is is new area here. We, you know, we couldn't even walk there last year. I'm not saying the forest fire was a good thing. I lost a lot of, a lot of pine trees in it, but it did clear off that area under there. And that's where the tent was in years past. So if we had a way to keep that clean until next year, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, we've done our part. It's your turn. Oh, you I can, get to go next yeah, year. You get to go next year. See I that? Think I got to paint my garage again. That's yeah. what I was doing actually when you that guys went. black on the bottom of the trees there, where the bark is burned. You know, it got. Yeah. It, it got pretty bad. That's a pretty big area right there now. I don't know if you saw it. There was a little red piece of red something that he he swung past real quick there mm -hmm. that was a piece of the crime scene tape from last year mm -hmm. it had kind of melted up uh, a oh, little yeah. bit there but it was still hanging on the tree yeah it's all that on there yeah so anyway we cleared off a nice big area and then the tropical storm came through and it was so muddy that we didn't even try to go back there we just operated from here and and speaking of muddy, well, we had to use the boots here. That's a pretty good look right there, too. Yeah. 
I'm pre I'll be surprised if by tomorrow afternoon we don't see people okay. walking around here. I think that same kind of tower email in had, isn't it? That's almost just like what you guys had in here. Put one on it. That's the MFJ cobweb antenna. That thing worked really well. It did work well, didn't it? It did. Very, very well. Well, let's just look at what kind of antennas we had this year. Okay, let's do that. Well, it's field day 2017. We're going to go take a look at the antennas that we're using this year. We're not out in the woods because we got rained out from the tropical storm. I guess it was called Cindy. <laughs> we got a makeshift tripod going on here. We've actually got it, a tripod from an old uh, wireless cable system that used to be here screwed onto some 4x4s to give it a little bit of weight at the bottom. Uh, two fence pieces of fence post and then the antennas up at the top up there. It's a, this is an MFJ, I believe it's model number 1835, it's their cobweb antenna. It goes from 10 to 20 meters, covers five bands up to 300 watts. And uh, I've been using that one primarily on 15 meters, I've made several contacts with it so far. Tuning it's actually pretty easy, you just adjust the spacing between it, kind of like the old erector set tool, uh, tools from a long time ago where you just put it in a different screw hole. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, I think putting it together is pretty easy too, although George had the pleasure of doing that himself. Okay, plan B for me, instead of having the 80 meter off-center fed dipole strung up, I took my little Tar Heel 2 off of my vehicle and I have put it on uh, my homemade copy of the Outbacker Outpost which uh, I do have a video of making this which I will give to George but um, I've get it, got it mounted here with my coax and my control cable that's run back into the shack um, that way I can just control it with my uh, MFJ SDC 102 controller and um, tune up to wherever I need to go. I've been working mainly 20 meters so far today, but uh, the bands have been fading in and out pretty good, so hopefully things will get a little bit better as the day goes on. Um, so far, it's been tuning up uh, from 80 up to 10. Uh, I've got the long whip on it, so it won't uh, be resting on six, but uh, with my... Uh, antenna tuner I can make it work on six it's just not resonant there because of some space constraints Wayne's brother Vince used his antenna still mounted on the back of his vehicle he used the Tar Heel antenna that you see along with the 17 and a half foot MFJ whip attached to the top of it that thing was really long it was quite impressive to actually see it would be kind of cool to see that going down the road that is a MFJ high power 4 to 1 ballon and right below it you see that coil of wire hanging there on a piece of PVC. That is a 1 to 1 ballon or a choke to help keep RFI from coming back down the coax into the shack and it did help out. Uh, the far end from where we're standing on the dipole is actually the short end. It goes up over a limb and a pecan tree there. If you come back the other direction, it goes up into the top of some other pecan trees. You can't really see it from here. They're just, uh, well, there, there's nothing to see but tree limbs. And then eventually there's a piece of rope that comes down. So it's just, a, you know, your typical 40-meter off-center fed dipole. But instead of uh, being mounted in an inverted V arrangement, it's mounted in a V arrangement because that's just the only way I could get the thing to stay up in the air. Uh, squirrels have cut the ropes a couple of times. I've had to rehang it, but, uh, you know, it worked the bands 40 meters and on up, so it's been a pretty decent antenna. I've also got, and you can't see it from here, an 80 meter loop that circles the backyard, and that uh, that maybe I'll go on tonight and do a little bit of operating from it. Vince sounds just like you. He's a ventriloquist. His, you never even saw his lips move, did you? <laughs> no, you didn't. He's good. Yeah, what happened there? 
That's a good question. Some, <laughs> yeah. Somehow the part where we had him talking about his antenna didn't survive the, the yeah. uh, recording. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm happened. I'm thinking about. maybe the camera was already on record, and it's when very, I walked up to it, I, it's very, I hit the button, and it wasn't on record. Very anymore. possible, but yeah. who knows. But the How that is, um, was pretty awesome. Oh man. man! It just kept going and going and going. And he could tune just about anything yeah. with it. What'd Fifteen you say, meters man? was pretty good down here. How was it up by you guys? Fifteen? Yeah. Uh, that was that was my band. I think I stayed on it the whole time. It was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I got yeah. uh, it had it had a few times when it kind of died out, but for the most part, it was in really good shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What that you station think indoors was actually state. We stayed on that for a while. What do you think about the cobweb? It was very, it was very nice. Um, it uh, pretty much everybody that I could hear, I made contact with, mm -hmm. and uh, I was kind of surprised at how well it worked. We had it up mm, 20 21, feet. 20 feet, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I thought it did good. Vince's antenna. I, I hate we didn't. That's all the footage we got of it. But, uh, you know, people coming through my neighborhood and probably looking <laughs> and seeing that 17-foot antenna off, you know. Yeah. On the, the, back, the, on the back, of the back of his small car. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe if he got going down the highway, the front wheels would come up on his car because of the drag. Yeah, or if he turned too sharp, it'd flip over. He could. <laughs> Either one. But it, it was impressive. It worked good, too. And Wayne, we, we all got probably more contacts than we've ever done before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we did by a long shot. Really. Yeah. I don't remember our uh, our actual score, and I don't think that made it into the videos here because we didn't know when we shot it. Yeah. But, uh, well. But that, it, we didn't set any records. No, no, by, by no <laughs> means. Only for us. Yeah. <clears throat> but we still had a great time. Which was a pretty easy target to, to hit, True. I must admit. <laughs> the, the lack of having to do the tent and some of the other stuff mm -hmm. helped us get on the air a lot sooner. So instead of getting on yeah. the air at 3.30 or 4, like has been in the past, we actually got on time. Yeah, yeah, we did. So, well, yeah. let's look at, um, look at our stations this year. This year for field day... We got rained out out at the campsite, so we're operating here from the studio, uh, my QTH, and I'm just using pretty much my regular setup, although it's being powered off generator power, so we can claim emergency power. I've got my desktop computer here. We're running the N1MM software to do the logging with. That seems to have worked out pretty good so far. It's way more sophisticated than the squirrel program, uh, but uh, maybe a little more stable. We, we hadn't wiped out anybody's contacts yet. Uh, also, well, I've, I'm using my Heil PR30 microphone here that, that I normally use. I've got my ProSet 3s here, and I've got a little set of Clips earbuds that... Uh, when I get tired of wearing headphones, I'll plug these in for a few minutes. Desk is cluttered now because I've been doing uh, various different things here. Over here is my rig. And right here you see I've got the IC7700. That's my main HF rig. It's worked really good for field day. I've never used it on field day before because it's, it's really too heavy to take out and use in a tent. You could, but you'd have to be more serious about field day than we usually get. Uh, but it is worked great uh, for the event today. You know, I like having the waterfall on it. That's always nice. Uh, the voice recorder and such has been handy too, although I had that in uh, my other rig, the uh, IC7000. And I've got the linear up here above it. I don't have it on. We we are just, you know, operating less than 150 watts this weekend, uh, staying within that classification. I'm using my external tuner. You know, I, I could use a tuner that's built into the radio, but the reason I'm using that external is because we're using these bandpass filters. 
These have, have really worked out good this year. They're made by Low Band Systems. We got them at DX Engineering, their exclusive distributor in the U.S. This is a 70 megahertz one right here. It can take up to 200 watts. Uh, we've also got one for 80 meters. Uh, of course, this is 40 meters. We've got 20 meters and 15 meters. So we've been able to get everybody on a different band and using these filters, we really haven't had any splatter problems. I'll occasionally hear somebody when they hit their auto tuner, uh, maybe just a little racket as it tunes. But other than that, I have heard absolutely no splatter all weekend, which in the past uh, has been, you know, a little bit of an issue. But these solve that problem right away. And I, I think everyone here would agree that uh, they were worth a small investment to get a set of those. Uh, let's see, I guess that's, um, that's pretty much it. There's more stuff here, but, uh, that's what I've used. I've got our orange compadre here. You know, I almost wore my orange shirt today, but I didn't. I wanted to stand out. You do. <laughs> what are you running over here this year, Wayne? Uh, pretty much the same thing that I've always run on field day. Uh, I'm running my Yesu 897 um, along with my LDG Z100 tuner. Um, got my Daiwa 30 amp switching power supply. Been a good little unit for me for the last several years. Got a 12 volt, uh, 12 amp hour battery back here that we, uh, I've got it on charge right now. We used it last night when we cut the generators off. Ran it for about two hours, and it held up really well. Um, I've got my uh, MFJ SDC-102 stru uh, screwdriver antenna controller, which is going out to my uh, little Tar Heel 2, sitting out there on that little outpost. And uh, for the most part, it's worked pretty good. I have hit a couple of spots where I've had issues with tuning and not sure exactly what it is. But uh, for the most part, it's worked really well. And uh, for those of you that are not sure, as, you know, on field day getting out, you can work with a mobile antenna on a little setup like that. Mine's worked really well. Um, yeah, granted, it's not a wire way up in the air, but uh, you can work field day. I, I probably logged. I'd, I'd be willing to say I've probably gotten about... 30, 35 contacts on uh, on 20 meters just using that. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, with that little vertical out there, it's done really well. And um, other than that, um, that's about the only thing new that I've really done this year. And, uh, of course, and my brother's over here. He's been running digital mode most of the weekend, so I'll pass on to him what he's got. All right, well, what I'm working with here this year is my Yaesu FT450, uh, mostly running digital. Got my Signal Link USB, my tuner, my MFG, MFJ SDC 102 to control my Tar Heel on my car, which I've also got a 16 and a half foot MFJ collapsible whip on uh, to get me up into those lower bands which haven't actually been that good this year, so I've been down on the standard bands, the 40 and 20. I'm also running the bandpass box, and they do help out quite significantly, but the uh, 20, 40, 15 meters have uh, been pretty good for uh, PSK this year, but uh, not so much everywhere else. And I think that's about all I've got here. All right, I guess it's my turn. I've got my ICOM 7100 here, and it's worked out well for me. My MFJ tuner, the MFJ 939, I really love this thing. It's so fast and um, quiet when it tunes, and uh, it interfaces straight with my rig, so I don't really have to do anything. I do have an external battery hooked up here for the power. Um, I was going to use that because we were on battery power last night 
just in case my when my battery gets low but anyway this it's not required it, the rig feeds it enough power when you're on the power supply um using this hand mic with it and then i've got my my same Heil headset like George is using here so we don't uh, interfere with each other audio wise running the same uh, logging software and I'm, I think I'm kind of becoming a fan of it I didn't like it uh, at first this is the uh, what is it N1MM software but I wasn't crazy about it at first it seemed a little overly complicated uh, but uh, it's really worked out pretty well. And I like that you can send messages and, and you don't have to worry about synchronizing the databases and, and sharing the same file over the network. So in that regard, it's, it's pretty user-friendly or stable. What about um, that laptop you got? What about that thing? If you call it a laptop, it's a, my old Surface Pro 3. It's worked out pretty good. It's a nice uh, little portable ham rig. doesn't take any space. It's like carrying a tablet around. Now, battery life on the thing's pretty much forever, so it's worked out pretty good. Kind of recommend it. I've actually got it, uh, the N1MM software hooked up to my rig through the USB port, and it actually picks up the frequency in the band that I'm on, so I don't have to worry about actually changing that stuff in the software. It just happens so automatically. Well, automagic is good. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. And that's about all I have to say about that. Did I miss anything? Oh. Incidentally, I have one of these back here too. I've been on uh, 15 meters mostly, so I've got the 21 megahertz one here hooked up. I, I I really can't say enough good stuff about those filters. They're they're not advertisers, and we don't. DX Engineering doesn't advertise with us or anything, but, but those really are good filters for the price. It's worked out really well. Uh, in the past, we've had a lot of trouble with kind of bleeding over on each other, causing descents and various assorted uh, anomalies, uh, but it's pretty much eliminated all that. So you really can't recommend those enough. You know, talking about that software, the logging software that we use in 1MM, it, it turned out to be pretty good, didn't it? And the, yeah. the thing about it is I wanted to do something kind of like Emil had with the Raspberry Pi, but I just didn't get a chance to write something like that. But in a way, that's kind of better because there's actually four. There were four people. There was actually four copies of the data. So I, yeah. every time you enter something here, automatically it was on every, automatically it was on everybody <laughs> else's computer. So yeah. if something happened to mine, there were three more copies here. That's that's pretty handy. Yeah, yeah, it was. And we, we had, uh, once we got it set up, that was a, the big thing in the beginning is the learning curve and getting it set yeah. up. After that, yeah, it was, like you say, auto magic. Yeah, the, the bad thing about it is we'll have to learn it all again next year because I doubt we'll use the logging software I doubt we will now either. and then. But nevertheless, it was good. Well, that's how we spent our field day this year. I tell you what, I got one more segment we shot during field day. This is this is about a piece of test equipment. But first, uh, let's get a message from ICOM, and we'll be right back. Start this year's contest season with ICOM. Heard it, worked it, logged it. The time is now to get your contesting equipment. Let ICOM help you make as many contacts as possible. Start off strong in the contesting this season with the IC7300. Ideal for the ham on the go, it's a high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with compact design, RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. Use the IC7851 and get the most out of contest season. Raise the bar and hear what others cannot with this HF 50 MHz transceiver. Reciprocal mixing dynamic range, crystal clear local oscillator design, spectrum scope, dual receivers, and digital voice recorder. For more information on all ICOM radios, visit icomamerica.com slash amateur today. And thanks ICOM for sponsoring us here on Amateur Logic. Yeah, that's 7300. Is a, that's a pretty awesome little rig it is it's uh well you know it, it's so much like uh, the more expensive mm -hmm. you know uh, it actually well. fits my workspace 
best at home too where my shack is there so it's really yeah. nice well i promised another video and what i was promising was on a magger we've talked about maggers before in the past uh, mag ohm meters that put a high voltage down a cable wanted to do some testing here because i've got an old one that i wanted to pull out and play with a little bit first though um We'd normally use this for finding a bad piece of coax. Now, here's a piece of coax right here that uh, I didn't have any bad ones. We had already checked everybody's coaxes in years past, and we couldn't come up with a bad one this year. So this is just a piece of RG213 that the connector was cut off the end, and, it, you know, it measured open. There was no, um, you know, short between the conductors on it. What I did is put a little piece of cotton across there, and that is wet. So it should create a little resistance there. I'm going to take my trusty voltometer here. I'm going to put this one on uh, the, the 20 megohm scale. So it should measure some resistance, right, if, there, if that wet cotton ball is causing some resistance. Well, let's see. It measured no resistance at all. It does not see that wet cotton ball out there on the end of that piece of line. So if you've got a problem with cotton balls on the end of your line, you're not going to find it with, <laughs> with this right here. Now we're going to pull out the mega here. I've got it set for mega ohms, uh, the 1,000-volt range here. Of course, you should have it turned off when you connect it. Okay, one clip connected to the shield, the other one to the center conductor. We're going up to the 1,000-volt scale here. And let's see what happens when I push the button. How about... It's varying there, anywhere from 16 to 32 megohms of resistance. Where this meter right here didn't read anything, it measured it as being completely open, no short whatsoever. This one here is seeing the breakdown in there uh, that that uh, damp cotton ball is causing. Putting that extra voltage in there really uh, peps it on up and, and helps break down uh, any problems with the dielectric and they'll be a lot easier to find. Now, this is a modern megaohm meter, battery-operated, digital. It does other things, too, like it'll do a 10-minute test on a piece of cable, which is a good way to test it. But back before they had these here, they had another type of megaohm meter. And it just so happens that I have the same exact megaohm meter I used to use at work years ago that um, I, well, that's a long story, but I've got it right now. I'm going to give it back to who should have it. But this is military surplus right here. It's a, uh, I think that's Holzer Cabot, U.S. property. So this is your tax dollars at work right here. This, I don't know, this probably came surplus from a ham fast or somewhere. Uh, the original owner of it was the chief engineer at a radio station I used to work for. I'm, I'm thinking he is probably passed on now. He left this when he left the station, and I used it over the years. This is my first experience with a, a megaohm meter. And I'm going to hook up a couple of leads here to it. We'll hook it up to our coax. And there's no batteries in this one right here. It's got a hand crank on it. And you crank it, 
And if it reads nothing at all, then you're good to go. The scales here, though, show magom. So let's just look at it and see what happens on this cotton ball. All right, let's disconnect the cable just to be sure that the instrument is working right. Nothing. So this one here goes up to a thousand mega ohms, puts out 500 volts DC, and that's what it does its test with. Uh, you know, I looked for one of these at ham fests for years and never found one. I think there's some out there, but they're a little bit harder to find these days. Anyway, if you've got access to a mega or you can you run across one at a ham fest or something, might be well worth your while to have it so that you can test coax and other types of cables or um, insulators to make sure that you don't have a breakdown. That mega is... Um what, didn't you feel like you were fishing or something? Yeah, I kept waiting for him to come up to the top. <laughs> that, that was a heavy-duty made piece of gear. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was. You know, that's what I was looking for at all these ham fests for all these years. Yeah, I, I remember you saying, that, you know, if you see one, but I'm not sure I'd have known what I was seeing when I saw it. No. Because uh, I've never really heard of one before that. Yep. What have you ever seen anything like that, Emil or or Peter? No, Cubs have seen seen it over here. Not that uh, one. But, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty neat piece of gear, though. Oh yeah, yeah. That of course, the the modern one, the digital one I had there, mm -hmm. Greenlee. That of course it, it's better. I mean, because oh, yeah, it I'm does sure. so many other tests and. Uh, and goes when you, when you were telling me you had one that you hand crank, I was picturing. Something like the front of a, what is it, like a Model <laughs> T or something? Because that thing's got to put out some volts, man. Yeah. And that just that little small crank like there, that's pretty amazing that it yeah. could get that many volts. Yeah. Yeah, it'll flat do it. You don't want to put your tongue on those terminals when, no. you, when you're cranking it. No, you don't want to wipe your face with that piece of damp cotton either <laughs> while it's still. <laughs> no. No, you don't. I got one more. Oh, you do? What do you got? I do. I do. I took a trip over to um, Jupiter, Florida, and uh, I noticed while I was there listening to some of the repeaters and just driving around, it's on the East Coast, right on the Atlantic, that there is a lighthouse and a ham club associated with that lighthouse. So we went and did the tour, and this first picture shows basically a timeline of what this uh, lighthouse was. And as you can see, it looks like it's got a history of being uh, both weather service which eventually became noaa in miami and also some listening stations in the loran station as well for the navy and the coast guard i thought it was pretty neat we took the uh museum tour and i saw this timeline which i thought was neat yeah, cool. uh the next the next picture there uh tommy is a telegraph key in there in their little cabinets yeah so it used it. to be a station they used and in the picture after that shows the actual morse code key which looks an awful likes you know one of the modern ones actually to me yeah it does the picture after that is the act that's the morse code key um that was in their cabinet and one more after that we decided to actually take a climb this thing is up oh. there it's huge and you can actually climb up the lighthouse so we did how did you bear hug that i i didn't <laughs> In sections, sections at a time. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the picture after that one is what you get when you actually make it back down. <laughs> oh, nice. How many and, feet? Uh, huh? How many feet? Oh, I don't know exactly how many feet up there, steps. but it is it is way up there. It says 105 steps to the top. Um, and you can see when you're up there, uh, I believe the next picture, you can see that inlet um oh wow for jupiter yeah that's the jupiter inlet right there into the atlantic and uh you can see all around in all directions 
Oh, that's pretty. pretty. Pretty good hike in the middle of a 90 degree day. <laughs> wow. And with the humidity, it felt like what, 200? It was about 200. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Is that a yeah. fun trip or a work trip? That that was a uh, vacation for us. We had uh, some friends over there who have a place in the Bahamas, and occasionally we'll go over there and uh, take that trip. One day I'm going to have to bring my ham radio gear with me. Well, that'd be a nice place to operate from. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. Well, Peter, you you said you had some news. Yeah, I've just got a, a quick little bulletin that I saw from the ARRL. Apparently, there's a, a new version of WSJTX out, uh, and it's got a new experimental mode, FT8, which is much, much, much quicker to use and is sensitive down to minus 20 dB. So go check that out. Oh, cool. Yeah, Marty said his friend Google. You you remember Marty and his friend Google. I remember both of them. They, they said it's 108 feet. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Emil, if you didn't get dizzy there, next time I need some tower work. <laughs> um, <laughs> now that, me up. Yeah, now that we know you can do it, you know. <laughs> Well, yeah, the FT8 stuff, that sounds kind of cool. I'm going to have to look into that. I haven't, I didn't yeah. read that. You, you've seen anything about it? I, well, I just saw the post about it. I haven't dug into it very deep to to see, yeah. um, you know, where it was. Have you tried it, Peter? No, not, not yet. Uh, I just, just before I downloaded the software, but I couldn't see where the FT8 uh, setting was. I suspect that there may be a special version somewhere on the website, so you might have to hunt around to find it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, cool. Keep us posted on that. Mm, we'll do. I might even do a segment on it if it's uh, interesting enough. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably going to do it for us tonight. We uh, appreciate y'all being here and uh, watching a little of the field day, uh, a few of the mishaps of live streaming as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, emails, pictures, Peter's bid X40, and then all the mm -hmm. other stuff in there that we can't even talk about. <laughs> you know, you just have to, you just have to watch it. So before we go, Tommy, you got anything else to add tonight? Uh, nope. I think I'm good, and I'm. We got uh, the next in two weeks. We've got the second round uh, for the general question pool on Ham College. That's so right. If you're a technician and you're interested in upgrading, come join us over there. We've started on the general technician pool, the questions, and uh, it's been a little bit tough. We've already had what two buzzers? Yeah, and I think I, I made both of them happen. <laughs> made me I proud. missed it. You, you missed, missed it. it. Yep. Aww. So anyway, if, if you're interested in upgrading, need a little push to get started, come join us. Yep, definitely. Uh, you, know, you know, no reason not to now. I mean, with Professor Thomas and Dean Martin. Can't go wrong, right? Nope. Nope. We'll have to get some videos of uh, Emil doing some of his training feats there as well. That would be they're good oh. for the curriculum. Yeah. Oh, All right. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> Peter, any uh, final thoughts from up above, down under? Uh, not really. The only thing I would say is that uh, I'm uh, very glad we managed to get through the entire episode without once mentioning either Alexa or Siri, <laughs> because if we did that, that would be really bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to say either one of those things. Emil, what about you? You know, I'm y'all got me thinking. Um, you know, you, Wayne and uh, Vince have been bugging me ever since they got their extra when we were in Huntsville. And did I hear you guys say that they were going to do some testing up at MFJ? They are. Yes. So I think I might make that my plan. Shoot for it in September and just get it out the way. I think that's an excellent plan. That's Arnie's group. I th I'm pretty sure that's Arnie's club that's giving that. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. so just just be sure you bring your government photo ID. Got it. And uh, fifteen dollars in American money. Okay. Yeah. Do y'all have a place to convert that Louisiana money to American? Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, well, uh, I'm going to be taking off next week. I'm going out to Houston, and I, um, I'm visiting uh, family out there, but I'm also going to make a trip by Fry's. Wow, it's yeah. a double vacation. It's a double vacation. If they had an In-N-Out burger there, it would be a triple Do vacation. They I don't think they have them down there. Wow. I don't know. They, you know, there's a Houston... Uh, used to have, I used to work out at uh, near Westheimer. Um, and there's a hobby store somewhere in there, around there, George. Uh, Houston Hobbies, or I uh, forget exactly what it is, but there's ham radios, a lot of electronics pieces. Really? Yeah. I think it's Houston Hobby Shop or something like that. I'll have to look to it up. If I find out. it, I'll send a link. Yeah, I will have to check that out. All right, we've enjoyed it. Thanks for being here. And uh, like Tommy said, join us at the end of the month for the next time college. Even if you've already got your general, it doesn't hurt to review. Yeah, it's still a lot of fun, too. Yeah. So, um, 73, everybody. We'll see you next time. 73. 73. 73. I think we got everything set to go. We're about 30 minutes late, so we're right on schedule. The only problem is, I'm surprised y'all haven't pointed this out yet. Tonight, Emil is down under. <laughs> He's up there? Yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm down here? Yeah. <laughs> oh. And I don't know that we can do anything about it. Tell me, what if you could have... One watt meter that that covered all your bands and everything you needed. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be pretty awesome. Where would you find something like well, that? Well, <clears throat> right there in your hands <laughs> while you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs>